Hello, viewer. Before proceeding with the video, we would ask that you rate yourself between the following choices so you can know if the information in this tutorial is right for you. If you are a Pyro who loves being a team player and promoting friendly gameplay for everyone, then please continue watching the video. If you love absolute hysteria and disregarding the happiness of others around you, we would ask that you listen to this video of a baby crying, because you should already be accustomed to that sound. Thanks! Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? My name is Nate, and today we're going to talk about air blasting, which is one of the most interesting and awesome mechanics within TF2. Now for those of you who have never played Pyro before, for whatever reason, or you've never used air blasting before, I'll quickly go over the basics. Air blasting, or otherwise known as compression blasting, is the alternative fire for all of Pyro's primary weapons except for the Phlogistonator, of course. Using this alternative fire, we'll shoot a small blast of air out of your flamethrower that can help you with a countless number of things we'll talk about. The biggest upside to using air blasting is that you can reflect projectiles that enemy players shoot at you. I'll use this first example here to show you that you can use air blasts to reflect rockets. You can see that as this soldier's rocket is coming close to me, I'll press mouse 2 to send the rocket in the other direction. If I send this rocket back at the soldier and it hits him, it will do mini crit damage, which is about 35% more damage than what a normal rocket would do. You can already see just how powerful this mechanic is. However, the only tricky part about air blasting is getting the timing down. If you air blast too soon or too late, you probably won't reflect projectiles in time before it passes you or hits you. Luckily, air blasting can be pretty forgiving if your timing is a little off. You can see here that I still reflect the rocket even if it's a bit far ahead of me, or just a bit far to my side. Just remember to practice this often so you'll understand it for yourself. Another great thing about air blasting projectiles is that you can send them in different directions. You can see here that when the soldier shoots straight at me, I can send the rocket towards the different places that I aim. This becomes super important to know, because you can use the projectile to kill other players other than the one who shot it. Now obviously, reflecting projectiles from actual players is going to be a lot harder than on bots who shoot consistently. Most of it will come down by getting to know what players you are up against. More often than not, less experienced players will shoot the projectiles as soon as they approach a pyro. This is why I like to air blast as soon as I run into them. A lot of times, they'll shoot and I'll reflect it back almost immediately, which can have some pretty nice results. However, more experienced players will know not to make it as predictable. They shoot at very random times which can completely throw you off. It's good to stay a little bit back so you can see the projectile before it hits you. Now that we're covering a bit about the timing of air blasting, we should quickly go over which projectiles you can reflect. We've already covered that you can reflect rockets. You can also air blast grenades, cannonballs, sticky bombs, arrows, flares, cleavers, baseballs, healing bolts, repair claws, gerati, milk, and energy blasts. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Look at all the things you can reflect! Just remember that the timing for each of these projectiles can be weird too. Some projectiles, like grenades, like to travel in an arc, so it's good to aim up so it will travel farther. Sticky bombs can be reflected out of the air too, but once they touch the ground, they'll just roll around all over the place. Take the time to practice reflecting each of these so the timing will make more sense, especially when reflecting some of the weirder projectiles. For example, arrows, healing bolts, and direct hit rockets will travel extremely fast, so they'll definitely be a lot harder to reflect. It's really satisfying if you can pull it off, though. Also, sentry rockets can be reflected. This is especially useful to know, considering sentries are really hard to take out as pyro. When a level 3 sentry shoots a rocket, I like to reflect it back at the engineer, because it makes taking out the sentry a lot easier for you and your teammates. You definitely want to practice this too, because staying out of the sight of the sentry's bullets can be tricky. But again, if you can pull this off, great things will come from it. Next up, we're going to cover the teamwork aspect of air blasting, and that includes putting out fires and controlling enemy players. For those of you who didn't know, if your teammate is on fire, you can put it out by air blasting. Doing so will also give you 20 health, which can be really beneficial with a lot of players on fire. It's crazy how using teamwork within Team Fortress 2 gets things done, right? You can also use air blast to push enemy players and control where they are positioned. A popular way of using this is to trap players up against a wall or a corner, and finishing them off with other weapons. This keeps the enemy player from getting away, so you can deal a lot more damage to them. Another great thing to do is air blast enemy players who are under the effects of an uber charge. Although you can't damage them, you can keep them from walking forward and killing your teammates. You might take a lot of damage while doing this, but your teammates are going to love you forever. Next, I should point out that reflecting projectiles except for stickies 
will do absolutely no damage to your teammates. However, you can still damage yourself. Be careful not to reflect rockets or grenades too close to a wall, or you might end up accidentally killing yourself. But again, if you save your teammates, then you're sure as heck doing your job. And lastly, although I consider this a douchebag move, you can push players off a cliff if they are next to it. I hate it when it happens to me, but it's just so much fun to do it to others. Now I want to quickly cover three advanced themes that you probably won't use as much as the other information, but it can come in handy in very specific situations. The first is that you can actually reflect some projectiles if you're standing behind an enemy player. As you can see here, I can reflect a rocket into the soldier at the exact moment that he shoots a rocket. This requires an insane amount of luck and timing if it ever happens in an actual game. But, eh, it's still kinda cool. Second, if you are under the effects of a crits Krieg, all of the projectiles that you reflect will turn into crits. Of course, this will do a crazy amount of damage if you do it right. And lastly, you can rocket jump and do pipe jumps just by reflecting as well. I've only used this once or twice in an actual game, and it can actually have pretty funny results. A pipe jump is fairly simple. If you know when the enemy demo man shot a pipe, you can reflect it and jump off as it rolls on the ground. You'll probably use this more than anything. A reflect rocket jump is a lot more complicated. This requires you positioning yourself so the rocket lands right next to you and reflecting it towards the ground. Unfortunately, this is hard to pull off because the enemy soldier will need to shoot in a convenient spot. However, if they set it up nicely, all you need to do is turn to your side, reflect it towards the ground, and jump and crouch at the same time. This will send you flying into the air, and you'll actually go a lot farther than a soldier would with a normal rocket jump. This can lead to a lot of surprise attacks, and you'll cause terror to the other players as they see you careening through the air like the crazy pyromaniac you are. Anyways, that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys can go out and have a blast playing one of my favorite classes in the game. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.